Hey, what's going on? Future is now podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Nakamura. I'm so glad that you guys are joining in today. Um, I'm excited about today's episode. We're going to be talking about uh, different events that are going on. So I'm actually naming this the Friday Roundup. And so what I'm going to start doing going forward is there's going to be two episodes a week. There's going to be one on a Wednesday and one on a Thursday. I'll give you guys a little 411 eventually in the future. What I want to do is I want to really start going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday episodes. Um, it's just too much for one man to do by himself. So we're going to do two episodes a week. Uh, the ones on Wednesdays are going to be more topical focused, uh, different things like that. And then um, Fridays are always going to be Friday roundup. So I'm, I'm taking some world events, some things that are going on, um, news from the last week, and we're going to talk about them. It's going to be in the Christian world. It's going to be in the main world, but just have a, you know, having a biblical context to whatever we're talking about. I think that's going to be healthy. I think it's important to know um, what's going on, but at the same time to not get like so depressed when you go on the news, right? If you ever watch the news, you like go on and you're like, why am I watching this? I'm so sad. So we're going to go through some stories and not try and not make it too bleak, but um that's what today's episode is going to be. It's the first one, so I'm excited about it. Uh, if you are a listener of the podcast, thank you for listening and make sure that you are subscribing to the podcast. You can do so by scrolling down on Apple Podcasts and then clicking that five star and then leaving a written review. That's the best way that I can get out. Uh, make sure you're sharing it with your friends. Okay, I got to take a second here um, and just thank you guys. You know, I posted something on Instagram um, a couple days ago. And it was, it was just basically a transparency post. It was a, Hey, um, you know, here's the real world and here's real life where I felt God calling me to, to talk about more polarizing topics and things that he was revealing to me. And because of that, I lost 600 followers on Instagram and my podcast numbers are down and whatever. Uh, but it was amazing because so many of you guys were messaging me and, and saying, no, I, I, I just sent your profile to my friend and I'm listening and I sent your podcast to my friend. We're pushing your content out. So um, I appreciate that so much, guys. I, I really do. So uh, the best way that you can say thank you to me is just sharing this, sharing it on your Instagram, sharing it, uh, sending it to some friends that would, would also enjoy hearing from um, this type of content. So um, as always, this episode is brought to you by Theos U, the best, best, best place to learn about the Bible. They have so many courses. They have so such amazing knowledge, all different um, avenues and types from uh, spiritual warfare to speaking in tongues to practical ministry, to uh, women in ministry, to deconstruction. I mean, there is so much there. So make sure that you guys are clicking that link below in the description. If you want to get started, you can use the code FUTURE10, that's FUTURE10, to get 10% off of your first month. So make sure you guys do that ASAP if you're trying to learn more about the Bible. And um, make sure that you guys are also subscribing to my YouTube. Follow me on Instagram. If you like something from the episode, make sure that you message me on Instagram because I love talking to you guys every single week about uh, what you hear, what you learn, and what you have to say about what I say. So uh, keep the dialogue going, but I'm excited. Let's jump into this episode of The Future Is Now. Awesome. Welcome to the first episode of Friday Roundup. You know, this this name might change. I literally na made that name like 10 minutes ago. I was like, what should I call this? Oh, let's call it Friday Roundup. You know, the last week of news and whatever. Um, the first one, I'm sure you guys have heard about this, but if you haven't, um, man, it's so unfortunate. So I woke up a few days ago and I saw this news scrolling through everything. And it's that, uh, the pastor of Villa Church, Matt Chandler is stepping down. So Matt Chandler, he's a big, big time, um, pastor. He's honestly, um, he was one of my favorite, uh, at least communicators of the word. Uh, I just really respected or still respect his view on biblical topics leading in an incredible church in Texas, by the way. And it's, um, it's flourishing, but so something came out. So I'll just, I'll just, uh, what is it? One of my, what's the word I'm looking for? I'll recap the story for you guys. So essentially he got up on stage on Sunday and he told his congregation that, 
a couple months ago, a woman approached him and she said that her friend, she was uncomfortable because she saw a direct message thread on Instagram between him, Matt Chandler, and one of her friends who is a girl. Now, Matt Chandler said that he, you know, talked with the, the woman and said, oh, I don't think anything's wrong here. My wife knows about the messages. Her husband knows about the messages. They're not sexual in nature. They're not romantic in nature. But anyways, after that conversation, he went to his uh, elder board and he said, hey, guys, uh, this is just what happened. And what happened is he, you know, invited a third party investigation and the council did their investigation. And what they found is that the messages between Matt Chandler and this woman were not romantic or sexual in nature, but they were too frequent and familiar and they labeled it as unguarded and unwise and so because of that matt chandler is taking a step aside uh didn't say time wise time wise but he's taking a step back from from the leadership of the church and this has been a very uh polarizing um topic it really has it's been polarizing because there's a group of people that that say well is that all it was? Is that all it was? Was it just messaging back and forth, platonic man and a girl? What's the harm in that? You know, then there's another people that are like, well, it has to be something more. They're probably not just telling us. There's probably something behind the scenes that was happening that was more severe. And, you know, I, I kind of disagree with both of these. So this is, you know, getting into the idea of, well, why is that unguarded and unwise for him to just platonically be sending messages to this woman? Um, and this kind of goes into my philosophy and my idea of men and women relationships in that the a man be, a married man and a married woman being friends in a singular sense, meaning like, um, you know, so I'm married, right? And my wife is Adrian. Now, if I was friends with a, with a different woman, that had no really connection or correlation with Adrian, or maybe she even did, but like all of our conversations and interactions are without Adrian. I I do think that that is inappropriate. Um, I do think that just because, uh, especially for a pastor at a church, because you know James one tells us, or James three one tells us that teachers are going to be judged a lot more strictly than the normal person. There is a higher standard for a teacher, for a pastor, okay? So that means that if you're crossing the line with something unguarded and unwise, then you have to take steps because you can't be hypocritical in the sense of there's tons of people that will look at, you know, um, moral failings that pastors have and say, oh my gosh, that's so terrible. Well, they should have caught it before it happened, you know that well they should have known like how is there no accountability guys this is what accountability looks like because even though it may not have been anything yet it had the the look and it had the potential and it had the direction of probably becoming something so that's what it i mean you can't be hypocritical and say wow where's the accountability and then look at this and be like they didn't even do anything wrong like you can't have your cake and eat it too so we have to look at that from this lens of like i think this is a perfect move from the board i think that you know what matt chandler said it himself he goes you know what because i didn't think that this was a big deal there's probably some things that i have to work out within me and thank god that this this was this happened when it did and i'm not saying that it would have no 100 percent, it would have turned into something but i'm saying it it, there was a chance that it did. And obviously that's the reason that he's stepping aside. And so, um, you know, we can talk about guy and girl friendships for um, a second here. It's my belief based off of experience and based off of observation that a guy and a girl, whenever they're friends, usually one's going to develop romantic feelings for the other. I mean, that's just the way it goes. If you're a girl and you're like, no, I got like 10 guy friends. Um, I hate to break it to you, Sally, but they probably all, you know, all like you or have liked you at some point. And I had a good conversation with somebody recently, a girl, and she said, well, and you know, here's the thing. She was single and I think it's different for single and I'll get to that in a second, single and married people, but she's single, her guy friends are single. And so she was in the uh, idea. She says, well, 
I have tons of, not tons, but <clears throat> I have a couple platonic relationships with men and I don't like them and they don't like me. And you know what? I, I have a hard time believing that there's never been developed feelings because here's the thing. Even if they've never made a move, I told her this. I go, even if they've never made a move, if you were to express interest, I bet you that they would be open to it. And that's the idea. You know, there was a psychological study done between men and women, the difference between them romantically. Um, and what's crazy is uh, there was... So they took random women on the street and a guy would go up to them and he would ask three questions. And these are non-Christians, by the way, obviously that they're interviewing, but this is just psychology of men and women. So um, he, they asked, so a, a guy went up to a girl and asked him three questions. Number one, would you like to go on a date with me? Number two, uh, would you like to go up in, to my apartment? And number three, would you like to sleep with me? Like very straightforward three questions. I'm not joking about this. This was actually a study that was done. So with the women, like I think it was like 30 something percent of the women said that they would go on a date. 4% said that they would go up to the guy's apartment and 0% said that they would sleep with him, right? I mean, if you're a girl listening to this, obviously you're like, if a random dude comes up to me and asks that, 100% I'm saying no. And again, I'm talking, I'm, this is a study about non-Christians, okay? So don't, don't get freaked out here. Don't be like, Spencer, what are you talking about? No, 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 non-Christians. We're just talking about psychological studies here. Now, a random girl went up to all these guys and what's, this is, you know, it's, it's not funny, but it is humorous in the difference that the same questions was asked. Would you like to go on a date with me? Would you like to go up to my apartment? Would you like to sleep with me? And the first question, would you like to go on a date with me? About like 50% of the men said yes. Would you like to go to my apartment with me? Um, 60% of the men said yes. And would you like to sleep with me? 74% of the men said yes. Okay. So now why am I sharing this psychological study? It's because men oftentimes are put in a position where they act out of um, opportunity. So any man that has an affair, um, they, they, did a, they did another study where men that had affairs they asked the men that had an affair, okay, why did you have the affair? And it wasn't that the man's uh, feelings weren't met. It wasn't that he the emotions weren't met. He was typically the men were emotionally okay in their relationship. But they what they said is there was just an opportunity that came up and I just got caught up in the moment, right? That I just there's it presented itself and my desires took over. That's that's majority of what men say. Now, females, when they're asked about, you know, affairs that they commit within a relationship, they usually say, my emotional needs weren't met. My I felt like my partner was absent. And so because of that, I was seeking emotional and that obviously leads to other things. So my 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 whole premise of male and female relationships in the context of I'm married, I'm never gonna have a friendship with a female outside of my marriage that Adrian also isn't a third party with third party with why because any companionship that I need I get from guys like I mean like, like guys I mean let's think about this for a second Adrian like romantically obviously intimacy I get that all from Adrian what would I get from another female platonically that I can't get from guys. Like, there's nothing. In fact, guys understand me more, right? I understand guys more. So why would I go to a girl for a platonic relationship when I can get that even better in guys? So it's just a matter of, you know, my pastor says this all the time, poor, poor, uh, what does he say? Hold on. The best decisions, good decisions, worst decisions, poor, good, better, best. That's what it is. So you have to look at the the decision making spectrum as poor, good, better, best. What kind of decision is it? Is it a poor decision? Just because it's not a poor decision doesn't mean it's not the best decision. Okay. So um, I have friends that are girls platonically, but they're also friends with Adrian. And I'm not going out to coffee with them. Like, I'm not going out to lunch with them. I might hang out with them with Adrian, but they're Adrian's primary friend, and I'm just a secondary friend because of the husband. So, 
Um, and I do that just because it's not, it has nothing to do with toxic patriarchy. It has nothing to do with demeaning women. It's not nothing to do with purity culture. Oh, you can't look at a girl without blah, blah, blah. No, it's none of that. It's just making the best decision for my life and my leadership. Okay. It's just putting boundaries in my life because that's the smart thing to do as a leader. Um, so that is what we're going to talk about with the guys and girls. If you have more questions, let me know because it's usually uh, there are. Um, going on to the next story. Uh, so this is something that I, I, I read about uh, earlier this week. It's funny how you know things can be juxtaposed and put side by side like stories that are completely – it's just – I think God did it on, you know, sometimes God does stuff and you're like, God, you did that on purpose to make me laugh. Um, so this happened in the same day. I, I was reading an article and it was Lizzo accepting her award at the VMAs. Now, uh, Lizzo is a very talented artist and she won the a VMA award and she went up, she's accepting her award. And um, she basically says, thank you for voting for me. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. And then she goes on to uh, say, you know, we have to vote for people like me so that we can change laws in this country that oppress us. I'm talking about oppression, which is a hot button issue, hot button uh, word in today's society, right? Like everybody loves saying oppression, oppressed. Oh my gosh, it's because I'm oppressed. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so only in America... You know, first of all, only in America is a person getting on stage in front of millions of people accepting an award for her talent and ability and fandom and how much people love her and then saying in the same breath that she is oppressed. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's funny. But then, you know, later that day, I read another article and it's about an organization that helps persecuted Christians in the world. And remember when the Af Af uh, remember when uh, the Taliban took over in Afghanistan and we pulled out all our troops like a year ago? Do you guys remember that? Okay, so if you don't remember, we pulled out in Afghanistan, and because the Taliban were like, "Hey guys, we're reformed. We're not that violent anymore." I know, like I know nine eleven, all that stuff, like. That was really bad. We're not like that anymore. We're very tolerant. We're very accepting. That's what they were saying. And right, anybody with half a brain could understand that they were lying. But we believed them, and we uh, we pulled out of Afghanistan. And what's crazy is now, Afghan Christians are getting persecuted um, like crazy. And so they <clears throat> they're reporting. This organization is reporting that you know um, Christians in Afghanistan they're trying to flee the country. They're in hiding. They're underground because um, the Taliban are finding them. They're killing them still. Um, they're torturing them. They're trying to get information on where other Christians are located. They're uh, kidnapping them. They're holding them for ransom. So we guys we have to understand outside of our little bubble what the world looks like because to say that you're oppressed while you're making millions and millions of dollars while there are people across the world that are literally getting killed and tortured because of what they believe um it's naive and it's untrue and uh what happens is these celebrities and these figures and these political figures they'll they'll preach a message and if we're not careful as Christians we begin to digest this cultural nonsense but when you take a step back and realize wow there are real killings happening in the world for what we believe it kind of sobers you up um and so it's just uh America at large we're very um obviously spoiled we're very privileged but when I say we're privileged I mean everybody's privileged here um I I mean I could go on with this I just um I said this in the last podcast this woman from Senegal amazing CEO and she said that this is the land of opportunity and so we have to understand that number one like there is a war on christianity going in whatever levels we're looking at at the domestic level there is a war to silence us you know it is getting in that stage where we're hateful we're bigots where we're not understanding um, but over across the world i mean we're, people are getting killed for their faith and i i know i i believe i have a strong faith but man can you can you picture 
uh, the, the scenario that either you basically denounce your God and Christianity or they kill you. I mean, that's crazy. And that's actually happening in the world today. So um, let's have a perspective today and be thankful where wherever we're at. If you're not in Afghanistan, you're probably in a, in a better place than, than you think that you're at. Okay. Um, another thing going on across the world, Australia impl implemented a ban on conversion therapy. Now, conversion therapy has a lot of like <clears throat> um, associations with the word, right? Now, th this is a ploy to be like, yeah, no, conversion therapy is bad. Because when I think about conversion therapy, it's like when I think about conversion therapy, I think about like people that, you know, are part of the LGBTQ community getting sent off to this lab and then they basically like chalk, you know, electrocute the gay out of them. You know, like that's what like in my mind, like conversion therapy. So it's like, yeah, conversion therapy sucks. Now in Australia, <laughs> this is not the case. Okay. Conversion, <laughs> they're, they are defining conversion therapy this way. So first of all, criminalizes attempts to change or suppress a, a person's sexual orientation or gender identity penalty up to 10 years in prison and may have a fine of a hundred thousand dollars. So this is the direct quote. Official guideline, guidance extends the ban to, so this is technically conversion therapy, a parent refusing to support their child's request for medical treatment that will enable them to prevent physical changes from puberty that do not align with a child's gender identity. So now conversion therapy is when a parent tells a 10-year-old you can't have hormone blockers. <laughs> Like, guys, and this is now criminal in Australia. And if we're not careful, this is going to sneak into every other facet of the UK of America that a parent now loses the right to their child in saying, no, this is best for you. Um, now, this is this is not OK. This is not good. I would be concerned if I was a parent because it's like, man, I mean, we're talking about kids that... Um, believe in the tooth fairy. We're talking about kids that believe in Santa Claus. We're, we, we, I talked about this in the past. When I was a kid, I thought I was going to be so many things, a great movie actor, a great this and that. And this whole culture of everybody gets a trophy, you can be whatever you want to be. I mean, kind of we asked for this because now kids are like, oh, well, I want to be a different gender. And now a eight-year-old, a nine-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old now goes to a medical professional. And now that medical professional gives them drugs that their parents can't say no to. I mean, come on here. Um, I was listening to this podcast the other day of a, a trans woman who's, sorry, sorry, a trans man that's now transitioning back to becoming a woman. So um, what am I saying? A trans woman that wants to, I'm sorry. It Honestly, I'm not trying to do this for comedic purposes. I just always get confused in this. So this was a man, sorry, a woman that became a, that transitioned to become a man, now transitioning back to become a woman. Got it. So uh, she transitioned to become a man, then she got saved and realized that the the void in her life wasn't a gender crisis, it was, it was God. And then she was like, oh, I want to change back. But she explains a process, which is pretty frightening. Um, she went to, she was a teen and she was just uncomfortable with her body as you know, puberty does with some people. Some people get uncomfortable. Puberty is a, a confusing time. And what happens is she goes, she's like, ah, I'm confused. So what does she do? She goes online and Reddit threads and Twitter and this and that. And people are like, oh, you're, you're confused. And oh, you don't like your body. Oh, you're for sure trans. You're trans. So what does she do? She goes to Planned Parenthood and Planned Parenthood says, oh yeah, no, you're trans. Yeah, we're going to give you some, um, we're going to give you some hormone blockers and then just gives them hormone blockers. And then she, you know, goes through the process, is even un more unhappy, more depressed, suicidal. Then she has a radical experience with Jesus and now she's on the journey to transitioning back to becoming a woman. So here's the thing is like, I mean, if you're eight, if you're an adult and you're going through that journey, like that's your right. But you, as a as as a kid, you can't tell me that my kids 
gonna think something and then go to the doctor and I'm not even aware of what's happening. No, that's criminal. So uh, that's going on in Australia right now. As Christians, we have to take a stand, guys. Like this isn't politics. This is like your identity in Christ. That's like when my, my number one pet peeve is like Christians that say, well, I don't want to get involved in that because that's political. No, it's it's not political. It's truth. It's Everything can be tied back to scripture. Why are we not taking a stand for the truth that the Bible says? That's It's being a coward. It's being passive to say that. It's not a good excuse. We have to stand up. We have to go to legislation. We have to vote. We have to stand up for what's right. These are our kids. I mean, these are kids, futures and health and prosperity at risk. So we should be more concerned with that. Um, the last thing on the list is uh, this is... This is arguably the craziest thing. So there's a there's a kids show. Speaking of kids, coming out on uh, Hulu and uh, and ABC. It's called Little Demon. I'm not joking. The premise of the show, Little Demon, is that a single mom gets knocked up by Satan. Guys, literally, this a single mom gets impregnated by Satan, and the daughter's the Antichrist. And they're trying to the, the the Antichrist and her mom are trying to live a normal life in Delaware. This is literally the synopsis of the show. And this is a perfect picture of where culture is at, people. Christianity is totally off limits. Oh my goodness. Christians, oh, they're so hateful. They're such bigots. They're such racist. Oh, Christians and the patriarchy. No way. No way. Toxic to culture. Bad for culture. Ew, get it away from me. Oh, uh, a children's story where a woman gets knocked up by Satan. I can get down with that. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? This is like the most backwards thing I've seen. And um, all that to say is we just have to be intentional. We have to know where we stand as Christians. Now is... Now more than ever, guys, we have to be standing up for truth. We have to be okay with having the hard conversations for saying this is wrong, this is right. Parents raising your kids the right way, not letting culture raise your kids, but raise your kids. Um, be intentional with it. This is some pretty crazy times that we're in, but um, we have to be willing to stand up for what's right and, and do the right things because, you know what, at the end of the day, God is the authority. God is over everything. He's sovereign. He's going to make a way, uh, but he he requires his people to really just be open to speaking truth and being open for the Holy Spirit to move. So I, I believe with great oppression comes great revival. Uh, with great hurdles comes um, a great move of God. And so I, I just believe that the move of God is it's upon us, you know, um, real Christians. I mean, there's no, there's no faking it these days. There's no lukewarm. There's no standing in the middle. It's either, Hey, I'm for it or I'm against it. And so I really believe that God's going to move in a mighty way. If we stand true to the truth, uh, that he's given us in his word. So, um, I hope you enjoyed this round of, uh, Friday roundup the first episode. Hope you learned something new. Um, I think it's good to be aware of kind of what's going on in our world because it helps us keep a pulse on what's uh, going on and how we can uh, do better and and really be a light in the darkness. So uh, make sure you guys are leaving a review on the podcast. Make sure, again, you share this, you like this, you comment on it, uh, wherever you're listening, share it with a friend, post it on your Instagrams, uh, message me. Let's talk about it. I love you guys so much. I pray for you daily. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time on The Future Is Now. Now.